Well, welcome to all of you. It's a lovely evening here, and it is actually Nelson Mandela's birthday. So I think we all have to have a big shout out to Nelson Mandela, and I uh, hope he has a very, very happy birthday. And to be fair, we've got some lovely guests online. We've got Peter Jacobson all the way from, from Australia. Welcome, Peter. And I know that it's a huge effort that you've made coming tonight because it was your son's graduation today, and it's 3 a.m. in the morning there. So if Peter sounds a bit groggy or whatever, to be fair, you've got to cut him a bit of slack. It's 3 a.m. in Brisbane. But it's fantastic to have someone with his experience and expertise to give us an update in terms of what's happening to Australia. So welcome, Peter. Thank you. And then we've also got Kristen, uh, one of my colleagues and partners, and uh, she's also online and also one of the, the leading sort of experts in terms of understanding what is happening in the Australian market. And uh, she'll be available tonight if anyone's got any questions or any thoughts or any concerns that we can run through. So the purpose of tonight is really to look at Showcase Australia. We really want to understand what's happening in Australia. It's very difficult always when you live on the other side of the planet to really you know, get a gauge as to what's happening and you read funny things in the, in, the, in the newspapers and the internet and you get different opinions on what's happening. And to be honest, I've got, to, you know, my, my, my thing when it comes to property is that there's only two things, particularly when it comes to international property. It's the information you get, the quality of the information and the partners on the ground that will determine whether you're successful or not. And in, that, in light of that, you know, we want to welcome everyone online tonight. It's fantastic to have all of you. And we really respect and applaud you for taking the time and the effort to come online and to get the right information. And that's really what it's all about tonight. You know, we're looking at, it's another Let's Talk property, and we're looking at showcasing Australia. And just before I get started, I'd like Peter just to tell us a little bit about himself. Some of you would have met Peter when he was out in South Africa here in March. We had a, a fantastic trip where we went to, to all the major different cities. But for those of you who don't know Peter, Peter, tell us just a little bit about yourself, a little bit about status you know, your kind of background in property, you know, I've, I've been to Brisbane and I've seen you, you've, you've showed me almost every big, you know, development in Brisbane you've had some part in. So let us know a little bit about your experience, please. Oh, hi, Scott. Well, as you know, I lived in South Africa for a number of years, but for the last 10 years I've been uh, selling property mainly for a number of um, very uh, premier class, I guess, developers within about a 10 kilometer radius of Brisbane. Uh, one to ten kilometres actually, and not the inner city. Uh, I don't recommend that investors buy in the inner city. But um, I've been pretty successful uh, in this business. Uh, my background has been in sales and marketing all my life. And um, I've become a really sort of like a bespoke tailor of real estate. I, I don't do what we would re refer to as mum and dad real estate. I, I specialise in project sales with a, a limited number of of top developers, and, and it's worked out extremely well. Um, the the projects that I have uh, are all in the top drawer. The, as you know, you had your clients buy a number of them from me, and particularly the Aria Property Group uh, and uh, Arden Property Group. Uh, Peter, can I ask you for a favour? I don't know if it's just me on my side or whether it's the long way overseas or whatever. But I'm struggling to hear you a little bit. If you could just try and speak up a little bit into the microphone, it'd be much okay, clearer. Okay, how's that? Is that better? Yeah, that's much better. That's much clearer. Thank you I'm very sorry. much. Sorry, uh, um, it's uh, a bit difficult to know just at what level to speak. Uh, yes. So, um, and right now uh, we've got a situation in the marketplace where we're approaching a, a serious shortage of property, not only in Brisbane. I mean, uh, vacancy rates. In Australia, is, zero is generally regarded as 1%, 3% is normal, and the only city even approaching a normal vacancy rate for rental properties is Melbourne. Um, the banks over the last four years have tightened up their lending criteria to the stage where it's ridiculous. However, our top four banks are all now in the top 15 banks in the world because they're a protected species. But by the same token, they've been really difficult in their lending criteria to developers which has created a shortage. Um, rents are going through the roof. The vacancy rate in Brisbane is approaching zero as it is in Sydney and in Perth it's 0.5 of a percent. So you're starting to get people auctioning rents. It's a pretty serious situation. The, um, the property market in Brisbane is extremely tight. Its prices are forecast to rise 
by between 16 to 20 percent over the next two to three years, simply you know, caused you know, by. You know, mate, can I can I stop you there? Because um, obviously we we want to go into this in a lot more detail, and we've got um, okay. you know some some articles and stuff that we would like you know your comments on. Um, so I mean I, I think you know what the whole purpose obviously of having Peter tonight is to really be able to to thrash out and to give us an idea of what's happening on the ground. But before we do, I just wanted to to share with you quickly um, something. And, and Peter mentioned you know some of the top property companies that he actually works with in Australia. And one of them is a is a company called Aria. And last year actually Peter actually helped a number of our clients. In fact. To give you some numbers, 80% of our clients who invested in Australia last year actually invested into this particular development, and it's now complete. There it is. It's the finished. It's the finished item. And I actually wanted to just share with you some pictures. And and you know the whole purpose of tonight was to do a bit of a showcase to give you a kind of idea. You know because you, people hear all these different stories and is the market going up and is the market going down and is it good or is it bad? But you know I wanted to share with you the the stories of our clients. That have actually invested into this opportunity because they invested in about um, September, October last year, and I just wanted to, to show you some pictures here. They should be coming up now, where you know it's now the finished product. It's it's all transferred. It's settled, and effectively they've taken ownership of these properties. and And this is where you know I really I want to get into what um, what Peter's talking about and and the rental demand and everything. But I wanted you to be able to visualize what he's talking about. So. You know, this is the CBD here, and effectively the river runs through here, and this is an area called South Bank. And you'll see here, th this is some pictures of one of our clients' actual units, Unit 503. You can see there in the, in the little study, the bedroom, these are all furnished apartments. These are, I know they look hell of a professional, but they're not, it's, it's with the furniture pack. They're not, they're not uh, artistic images. These are, these are the actual pictures of our client's unit that they invested in. So the bathrooms. That's right. One of the bedrooms here. I mean, you can see it's been properly professionally designed, proper real furniture pack. I mean, I just think these pictures are absolutely stunning. Obviously, looking through the the kitchen and and dining room and living area. And I'm just sort of clicking through. Hopefully, you're getting an idea. Now, this is the outside balcony. You can see they're li literally looking over the skyline of Brisbane. Um, so South Bank is just on the other side of the of the river. And effectively, there's the picture you've already seen, which is the main the main picture. This effectively would have been the introduction, you know, the day they had launched it and everyone came through. You've got the courtyard, well, not the courtyard, I suppose the entrance foyer in terms of, you know, coming in. But you can see really, really top quality finishes. This particular developer, I presume these are the property managers. Um, I'm not yes. sure, Peter. Yes, he's the, 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 the live-in property manager. They, right. uh, they run the, the building. Something very unusual, um, you know, well, not unusual by Australian standards, but unusual for us South Africans, is that these people will actually live in the property, um, on the building, on the premises, and they will look after it. They, they effectively make sure that it runs smoothly. Um, they do a lot of management in the building. It's quite, a, it's quite unique. It's very different to South Africa, but it runs a lot more successfully because it makes sure that the, there's only one general rental manager I and mean, agent, and they look after the whole building and everything else. So... So that will be them. And then this was the, uh, the pools outside. And that, that really gives you an idea of the picture. So, you know, I, I just really, when, when, when Peter and Kristen sent me those pictures, I was just absolutely astounded. And I'll be honest with you, we've, as I said to you, over 80% of our clients last year invested in this building and are extremely, extremely happy. And the other thing that our clients did is that they all, all the clients took our platinum package. And our platinum package is a very sophisticated and unique concept that, that IPS put together to enable our clients to really benefit with regards to investing. And what our platinum package allowed them to do was now when they're taking transfer of their unit or settlement in Australian language, is that per unit they are being paid back eleven and a half thousand dollars. And so in, in many instances some of our clients took two properties, one of our clients has been paid back his twenty three thousand dollars. And it was actually quite funny because some of them had forgotten that the money was owed to them. And they were hell of a, you know, impressed and, and surprised when the money got put in their bank account. But think about how cool it is. There's no need for a slush fund. There's no need to send money overseas. There's no need to worry about the rand to dollar exchange rate because the money's in their bank account and effectively they can use that should there be any shortfalls or anything else. So it's a very unique concept. It's, 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 it's ours. We designed it. We developed it. And, you know, certainly it's, it's really nice to see when it comes to fruition 
and the clients now own such a spectacular property, but also where the platinum package worked in their favor and you know they, they got $23,000 put into their bank account before the property investment had even started. So you know, just, just as a matter of interest, and, and um, I'm not sure Kristen or Peter, if there's anything else that you would like to mention, but you know, Station 16 and the ARIA group, I mean the ARIA group is a matter of interest, there's very few developers in the world that build stuff with cash. And they build stuff with cash because they've got a huge bank balance. They, they're one of the most successful developers in, in Australia. Their, their, their family is, comes from a long line of, of developers. And so when they do something, they do it at top spec. It's top quality. You can see the type of building you're getting. And, and they don't cut any corners. And I'm not sure, Peter, if you want to add anything with regards to that. Well, the thing that I can add, uh, Aria is owned by Kirsty and Tim Forrester. They're both early 30s uh, brother and sister, who the son and daughter of Rod Forrester, who was chairman of FKP, which is Australia's largest uh, listed property group. And about seven or eight years ago, he gave his son and daughter $60 million to invest in a land bank in that South Brisbane area. And they, uh, subsequent to Artisan, which there's only about half a dozen apartments left in, they built Vine on Russell, which is only about 300 metres away from the, the property you're looking at. They sold all of the 56 apartments in eight weeks. They will not start construction in that until September, and they've got another two or three uh, projects ready to go in that South Brisbane area because the demand is such that uh, a lot of the mining companies are moving their executives up from Melbourne and Sydney to take advantage of the massive export uh, business that Queensland has in coal and minerals. And it's just uh, stretching out as far as you can see. So the, the demand is there. And as you can see by those pictures, you're within one kilometre of the CBD. And across the road, you've basically got the arts uh, gallery and the convention centre. It's all within walking distance of where they are. So it's, they're just terribly successful. And they've got the wherewithal uh, to do that because of their background. Look, I think I mean I think that's the most important thing, and and as as we were we were very lucky, and it's only through our association with you know dealing with the best people in Australia, which is you know Peter's one of those best of breed partners, that we've got access and our clients have access to these top quality projects. You know, really the the the, the prime of the, the the prime of the of the entire crop, and and I'm going to I'm going to go into that in a little bit more detail later because you know Peter, we're going to come back to South Bank. And, and what is happening in South Bank. But I just wanted to share this fantastic experience because it's great to see you know, clients that have invested, they, 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 they invested in off-plan development, they, they trusted you, they trusted us, they trusted Kristen. And the bottom line is you know, it, it's, it's a spectacular development. And, and just a little bit, tell us a little bit about the rents in, in Station 16 quickly, Peter, because I know that from what you've told me and from what Kristen's told me, the rents are actually coming in higher than what was what was um, you know predicted because of the demand? Well, I mentioned earlier about the the auctioning of rents. Um, recently, in this in this building alone, um, they had six one bedroom apartments available earlier on, and one of the mining companies uh, had to have six on a two year lease very very quickly, and they got over seven hundred dollars a week for one bedroom apartments in that building. Now that's an, I mean, they, they wanted them immediately. So they were able to basically, you know, choose their own price. Now, that doesn't happen all the time. However, the rents that they, they're getting uh, for something so close to the city are right at the top end. And uh, I think you'd, you'd agree from the clients that are bought in Station 16, they are getting excellent rents. And there's still massive demand for property in that South Brisbane area because of its proximity to amenities and facilities. And right across the board in this country, there is a transference of demand from freestanding houses <coughs> to apartment living, not only for executives that are on short-term contracts. And that's one of the things that's coming into South Brisbane is that the mining companies have demanded that, uh, so much in terms of architects, engineers, and uh, highly skilled people that are moving up from Melbourne and Sydney on short-term contracts, like three to five years. They don't sell their houses in Melbourne and Sydney. The company uh, pay for their, um, for their accommodation and they want these executives to go to work immediately so they make sure that their families are well accommodated and comfortable and they're prepared to pay uh, whatever it takes to make sure that those executives' families are well housed so that their executives can get on with the job of running their companies. 
So that's one of the things that's driving the demand in the, in close to the Brisbane CBD. Now, Peter, let's let's zoom out a little bit. I mean, we've zoomed in to a specific opportunity. I mean, this was this was our showcase last year. I'd be, you know, I'm sure I'm sure it was a showcase for you as well because it's so nice to to see a finished product that, that's come through with such great quality, and and it's awesome for us to have so many happy clients that invest in it. But let's just take a let's just take a a, a zoom out and let's just look at the Australian market as a as a whole. And then we'll kind of zoom in to, to Brisbane and Queensland, and then we can zoom in again to South Bank. So I just wanted to, to open up quickly the, the RP data report. And, you know, yes. the, the, you should see it coming up on your screen now. Now, RP data is, yep. is one of the most balanced reports. It's not, you know, it's, not a, it's not a bank. It's not an estate agent. They pretty much call it as they see it. You know, I, I often say that, you know, it's it's like an Erwin Rudo report in, in South Africa, where if well, RP data, RP data is more than a report. RP data takes the actual sales from the titles office. Australia has an extremely sophisticated uh, recording method of as properties are sold, and when the solicitors um, exchange contracts and the product and the product is settled, all of those details go into a government uh, into the government titles office. So the the statistics and the figures that RP data uh, use come straight from the actual sales that are recorded in the government titles office. So their figures are actuals. Fantastic. And you know, it's something that I always use to get a, a good overview every month on exactly what's happening in the market. And you'll see here from this report, it's from July the 2nd, 2012. So it comes out every month exactly like Peter's just mentioned. But I thought that I would just, uh, I would just highlight you know, Australian capital home values rebound 1% in normally a weak month in June. Home values across Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Perth, Hobart and Canberra all rose by 1% or more in June, helped by RBA interest rate cuts over May and June. Melbourne dwelling values have uh, staged a striking 1.7% recovery since reaching the trough on the 11th of June. And I just thought it was pretty interesting. You know, if you want to understand Australia as a whole, Australia effectively boomed through 2009, so while the rest of the world was in trouble, Australia boomed because interest rates dropped from 8.75 to 3%, and in, and in 2009, the market actually grew by 9.6%. Then in 2010, they saw similar sort of growth, but the, but the bank, the, um, the Reserve Bank, the RBA, basically started to get nervous about inflation. And so they actually put up interest rates eight times. Okay, and granted it was only about 0.25 percent, but eight times from a psychological point of view is a big thing. And and then what happened is the whole the whole market tended actually started to slow. Like any rising interest rate cycle, it's the same anywhere in the world. When interest rates rise, then effectively capital growth starts to slow, and the demand for rent returns and the yields increase. Am I right or wrong, Peter? Is that not what you found over the last 12 months? Absolutely, and now what is happening, that, um, uh, for, for your listeners that <laughs> don't understand, we have uh, probably the worst government in Australia's history, is pent-up demand happening, and the RBA are now, um, in, there's, the economists are forecasting that they'll drop rates again by at least uh, another 0.5 of a, of a percent between now and Christmas, and there's just such pent-up demand for property because of the bank's uh, reluctance to lend to developers over the last four years. So we've got this pent-up demand which is driving rents. And um, it's, it's going to break out because the banks are creating the next boom, which I think is about 12 to 18 months away. So we're starting to see quite a significant lift in inquiry from investors uh, over the last three to four months. Of course, as you said, the end of the financial year, nothing really happens in June. <laughs> People, for whatever reason, think that they can't do anything in June because of the end of the financial year. But since the end of June, it's interesting that we've received, we're starting to receive a significant lift in inquiry for the property, from investors in particular. Perfect. And I mean, you'll see there in this report, and the purpose is not to go through this whole report because you can read it. If you want to get hold of us, we can, uh, we can send it to you or, or it's on our website, on our blog. But effectively, there's been a 55 basis point reduction. So interest rates have dropped by, you know, 0.5, 0.55%. And, and so now the confidence is starting to come back. People are not so nervous that interest rates are going to continue rising. As Peter said, there's actually talk of them continuing 
uh, in the right direction in terms of downward movement. And I just think this report is absolutely spot on in terms of where it's going. And I just thought from a macro level, I would like to point out that on the whole, things are actually, you know, like in any rising interest rate cycle, and then when interest rates start to drop, what's happened is that the, the rental demand has increased, exactly like Peter said, and, and in, even the demand now is starting to come back into the market, exactly for very simple reasons. Suppliers has been at an all-time low, exactly like, uh, like Peter said, and now effectively you've got the, the rentals, you know, uh, sorry, you've got the, 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 the demand coming back, etc., and you're starting to see that in the growth patterns. The, the, other, the other article that I wanted to show you was by a guy by the name of, um, sorry, just before I do, this is, the, this is a graph, uh, Peter, which, um, which I think very much explains what you're talking about. And it explains the shortage in terms of property. Exactly. Um, and it's just and it's effectively worse. just growing and actually getting worse. Absolutely. And, and you can see there, you know, with regards to this graph, what's actually happening here in terms of the surplus of properties through to the middle 90s. And since then, there's just been a continual growth and, and it's a population growth, it's an immigration growth, it's people downsizing, it's exactly what Peter said. Some people are not living in four and five bedroom homes anymore, they're choosing to live closer to the city, like as an example Peter does. I've been to Peter's house, him and his wife live on the river in Brisbane, um, literally like on the river basically. They're, they've chosen not to live in a, in a big fancy house anymore, they want to live in a, in a nice fancy apartment, lock up and go on the river, nice easy close to the city basically. That's exactly what's happening at our end of the age spectrum, and at the other end, you've got a lot of single people, you know, that no longer do they get married at 23 and go and buy a house in the burbs and have children. Now, I've got two sons, 27 and 25. They're not even contemplating that. They, live in, they want to get a one-bedroom apartment and travel, and uh, they want to be close to amenities and facilities, the same as older people at the other end of the scale, and that's exactly what's driving it. And this, this graph just gives you an indication and it shows you the rents and it also shows you CPI in terms of what has happened. But the other thing that I wanted to show you was um, a guy by the name of Matusik. And Matusik is, is very much like the Erwin Roeder of, of Australia. And he's got an entire report which he's put together. And before I show you that report, what he's actually done quite interesting, a lot of you would have seen the property clock before. It's a, it's a fairly standard thing. Erwin Roeder does it. I, uh, my, my old friend Ian Fath used to do it, and it effectively shows you where different things are, where they're, where they're at the peak and at the bottom. And this is actually an article from a talk that Matuzik did about two months ago, and um, it's interesting where he puts everything in terms of the peak, the downswing, the bottom, and the upswing. And like any investment, any property market, they go through a cycle, basically. And quite interesting enough, he's got Brisbane sitting right at the bottom. And interestingly I'm enough, you know, look now. Pardon? I think it's moved to seven o'clock now. Probably, probably. And, and in the last two, three months, I wouldn't, you know, from what you've told me, Peter, and everything else, 100%. But I just wanted to, to give you an idea of that. And then I've got the full Matusik report, which, uh, which Peter very kindly sent to Kristen and I. And again, I'm not going to go through it all. Um, but interestingly enough, he, he challenges this whole, there's going to be a crash and what's going to happen and, and why it's, you know, what's happening with vacancies and, and, uh, and demand. And so a lot of what Peter's telling you now is not just Peter's opinion, it's, it's, it's his own understanding and knowledge of what's happening in the market, but it's backed up by, by all the reports, the research, and, and the people like, you know, the Erwin Ruders, the Matusiks of this world, basically. Um, I think that's pretty classic. People are just storing their nuts for winter and missing out on great buying opportunities. And then there's a the whole thing in terms of what is the bigger picture, and he talks about housing finance. He goes in terms of how many people need to sell, investors, dwellings, what's happening, resales, in terms of the market. You can see Brisbane there in terms of this year and last year. You can see asset allocations, vacancy rates in terms of where it is, what's happening. You've got the dwellings and how they finance. You've got superannuation funds and what they're financing. You've got rental growth and rental demand. You've got forecast for house prices. So, I mean, there you can see his forecast right through to 2015, and I think the red line is fairly self-explanatory. Then you've got the property clock, which uh, hopefully I've, uh, I've already shown you. It was the one that I had in my PowerPoint. It's just interesting. It's, it's someone's opinion, and obviously in Australia there's always a market within a market, but it doesn't matter. As a, as a, and then lastly, you've got the confidence, the supply and demand, and the job creation. And he goes into quite a lot of detail with regards to Brisbane in terms of the confidence, 
where the where the confidence marker is. So look at Queensland here in comparison. There, there's Australia in comparison with the rest. So the only one competing is Western Australia. And tell us a little bit, Peter, because it's quite important. You know, we all hear about Mer Perth as the mining town. But when I talk to you, you know, the one thing that the Brisbane's got is that it also is very resources rich, but it's not dependent completely just on resources, but it is benefiting massively. Well, not at all. I mean, it's very interesting because Matusik is, is very highly regarded and also uh, is, is employed a lot on a consultancy basis by many of the top developers. But the two states, as you see on this graph, are the two mining states of uh, Queensland and Western Australia. Now, uh, it's not only China that's driving this, it's also India. Australia, uh, we've got unbound uh, opportunities in both of those countries, but Additionally, the Chinese recently are coming in here and, and want to make Australia the food bowl for Asia. So there's, there, there's enormous investment uh, coming both into Queensland and Western Australia, not only for minerals and coal and gas, but also for food. In fact, uh, Ingham's, which is the biggest chicken producing company that's been uh, in Australian hands since the early 1900s, looks like being sold to the Chinese for billions of dollars because they not only need minerals and oil and gas, they also need food. And Queensland in particular provides, I think, don't quote me on this, I think 60% of most of the food, uh, fruit and vegetables, for the rest of Australia. So, they'll, and, and it's unbounded. There's so much land to the north uh, where they're going to harness the, uh, the monsoonal rains uh, by um, creating huge dams and to, to um, create this food bowl for Southeast Asia because Asia is where it's at and we're right in the middle of it. So one of the things that's kept Australia buoyant throughout this global financial crisis is our proximity to the fastest growing area in the world uh, where we are supplying not only minerals and oil and gas and, uh, but now food. So Queensland and Western Australia are the two states uh, right in the forefront of this development. And what I heard, what I heard, which is very important as well, it's something like Australia has seventy percent of the world's coal, or so, you know, something, and Brisbane in particular has seventy percent of the world's coal. And with its proximity to China, exactly like you just mentioned, is that the guys in Brazil and South Africa can't even get it to China for as cheap as the as the Aussies can, just because of their proximity in terms of transportation. That's correct. So, I mean, this report is available again. It's on our website. But you can see housing demand versus new supply. So you know you can see the the, the, the the balance and what is happening in terms of supply and demand and the kilter graphs and what is actually happening. You can see here the, the job creation. So I think that pretty much sums up what uh, what Peter's just been saying, you know, in terms of the, the huge job creation that's happening in Queensland. Uh, not just from a mining perspective. And that's the one thing I like about Brisbane is that it's not just a mining thing, it's it's a balanced economy. And then you can see the economic growth forecasts and what's happening. And again, Queensland's you know, right out there. Its, it's biggest competitor is Perth in terms, of, uh, in terms of what's happening. And then just some observations, new dwelling sales. This is exactly what Peter's saying. Um, effectively, what's happened you know, with, the, with the interest rates, effectively, the, the, the demand has decreased. And there's been the, the, the government, and I know, Peter, you've got some choice words to talk about the government, even your, even your state government. You were very excited in March because I think the lady got kicked out or something happened. Uh, but the point we of the matter was, yeah. yeah, we've had a massive win for uh, the conservative parties in uh, in Queensland, and the way it's going at the moment, we're due for an election in the latter part of next year, and um, the way things are going at the moment, the Labor Party will not be left with one seat in the whole state of Queensland. They will be lucky to have a cricket team across Australia because Western Australia is going the same way. If the current opinion polls go the way that, uh, that they are going, they will not have one sitting member in the whole of Western Australia or Queensland and they will be uh, reduced to a rump party across Australia. That's, that's the way it's looking at the moment by all the polls. But as you've been saying, though, Peter, one of the things that the government, both, uh, well, mainly the regional government, but also the national government, and the planning and all the red tape people have to go through in the way that the banks have been causing havoc for developers. So even though there's a demand, a latent demand, there haven't been enough 
um, opportunities for developers to come into the market. And you can see that with this graph where effectively there's been a massive problem on the supply side. And as you said, it's only a matter of time until that pent up demand sort of explodes because of the lack of supply. And you reckon 12 to 18 months that things are going to start to really tick. Well, I think by the, uh, the next two interest rate uh, reductions, if they come to pass, as the economists are predicting they are, there's going to, going to fuel it. There comes a time when people say, hey, I'm paying $600 a week for a two-bedroom apartment, I'll buy something. Well, good luck, uh, because of the restrictions by the banks placed on developers over the last four years, you can't just turn a tap on and build, you know, 10-storey apartment blocks. So there's going to be that, uh, you know, hiatus between the time that they get geared up again and they and they get finished stock. Meanwhile, rents are continuing to escalate at uh, un unprecedented rates, uh, more to pity, because it's really difficult for people to find somewhere to live. Yeah, no, it's 100 uh, percent. And I think, you know, a massive lesson I learned from the global financial crisis, and I'm sure many others did, is that it's the, it's the fundamentals of supply and demand. You know, in a country like America, where there were 10 million properties oversupplied, the problem what and the reason the market crashed and has, you know, in five years hasn't even recovered yet and is bouncing along the bottom is because of supply and demand. There were 10 million properties oversupplied and the market couldn't recover. Ireland has been the most effective market, uh, market in Europe. One in four homes in Ireland is standing empty. You know, whereas, you know, and, and the same with the likes of Spain and Dubai and, and Cyprus and, and other areas where there's massive oversupplies and the market can't recover and, it, and that's why it's in a free fall. Whereas markets like London, where the supply and demand are not out of kilter, even though the global financial crisis had a big impact and the market lost 15%, it recovered in less than 12 months by 17% because the demand was there. And, and this is what Peter's saying, and I, it's why I wanted to highlight it, because you know, no matter what happens in the world, if supply and demand is in kilter, and if there's rental demand for your property, then you just ride the storm. You know, and that, that for me is, is such an important mindset and why we're trying to ask, you know, someone like Peter who's on the ground, what is happening, what is happening with these housing starts and, uh, and, and really it. So that gives us an idea of, of Matuzic's report in terms of where we are. And the, the next report that I wanted to show you was something that Peter sent through very kindly to us. And I tell you what, for me, there's, there's no better feeling and I'm sure for, for Kristen, who really spearheaded this and, and deserves all the credit in terms of what happened here working with Peter, where, you know, helped many of her clients uh, actually invest here. But what I found absolutely fascinating is that South Brisbane has recently just been voted the best suburb in the whole of Australia. So Peter and Kristen and, and, and you know, the team worked together, you know, last year to help our investors. Over 80% of our investors invested in Station 16 last year. And it's, it's with huge pride that, you know, a year later, South Brisbane has been voted the best suburb. Not number two, not number three, not number ten, the best, number one. Top 100 suburbs, South Brisbane. And uh, this is a report, again, that, um, that we can send out, but it's got a little bit of stuff here. It's got the house price growth, what's happening between houses and units. It's got why buy, it's got proximity to the CBD. As Peter's already mentioned, it's one kilometer. I wish I had a better copy and I do apologize, but South, the, the, you know, South Brisbane is this, this area here on the other side of the river. Uh, so you've got the river here, this is obviously the river flowing through, and then you can, you can see the CBD of Brisbane. So it's literally one it's kilometer. A little bit of so rental yield, Pardon? The rental yield. The rental yield? Oh, there, the rental yield. Yeah, no, 100%. So, I mean, the rental yield, you, you're averaging a rental yield of over 7%. Um, the median price, again, this report is available. But, I mean, again, low supply, high demand, population growth, solid infrastructure, and diverse employment nodes. And I just wanted to, to take you through this report and show you. This is the uh, Suncorp Stadium where my beloved Sharks will be playing this weekend. I am right, isn't it? This is it, isn't it, here, yeah, Peter? I can't see it on my... Where, oh, the Suncorp Stadium is just up the road from South Brisbane. Yeah, it's down the bottom there, basically. Mm -hmm. um, but just, uh, just in terms of some of the things that, uh, that are highlighted, you know, over here, South Brisbane raced to the top position in this year's top 100 ranking, knocking off Sydney's Alexandria off the perch. 
A potent combination of high demand and low supply, as well as solid fundamentals, help South Brisbane outshine the other strong contenders. This distinct shortage of supply, contrasted by raging demand, has forced rents and medium price to trade at a premium, according to the Urbis, Urbis report. Without doubt, the rents in South Brisbane are the best for blue chip suburb located anywhere in Australia. Sam Sagas, CEO of Positive Real Estate. Located just two kilometers from the center of the city, South Brisbane is the site of South Bank, which is the home of a raft of cultural spots, including the Gallery of Modern Arts, the State Library, and the Queensland Art Gallery. It's a mecca for students, executives, and the city's elite. The suburb is a cultural hub for Brisbane. It has some of the best award-winning restaurants, museums, art galleries, access to train lines, amenities, along with um, a whole lot of 20,000 20, square meters, I think, of commercial space. And uh, it's also got the largest and some of the biggest commercial tenants. I know, Peter, you mentioned, you just mentioned a big mining company. You've also mentioned one of the banks uh, you told us about that yes. was moving in there. And that's um, that's you, that's 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 just moved their whole uh, head office from the CBD uh, one kilometer across the river into, um, into South Brisbane. In fact, it says they're two kilometers. Well, it spreads uh, further than that, but basically South Brisbane is one kilometer from the heart of the CBD, and um, that's the reason many of the mining companies are moving their head offices over to South Brisbane because of the rents in terms of commercial rent is, uh, is much cheaper than the CBD, obviously. However, the, the, the need to house staff and executives is driving the residential property market much, much higher. Which bank was that, Peter? I didn't quite hear you clearly. Suncorp Metway. Bancorp. Suncorp. Oh, Suncorp. Well, Suncorp. Okay, Suncorp. Suncorp Stadium. They're the ones that fund your beloved um, Broncos uh, uh, Stadium. Brisbane <laughs> Reds. Yeah, no. Okay. So, I mean, just, just some things with that. You know, you, as you know, it's very interesting to know the bank. You'll see here, it's also got the... Um, the, the conference center, so very similar to Cape Town where you've got the conference center on the foreshore and the way the whole city is growing in that direction, it's exactly the same. The conference center sits there in South Bank. There's been $2.5 billion worth of uh, spending in terms of infrastructure in both private and public capital spending. So, you know, and there's a whole lot of, uh, there's a lot of uh, infrastructure being built in terms of public transport. So, you know, I think, I think this is, again, it's a neutral article. It's not a marketing pitch by me or Peter. This is a neutral article, and it was rated the number one best um, suburb in the whole of Australia. Not just the whole of Brisbane, the whole of Australia. Tight rental demand, vacancies of less than you know, 2%, 1.29%. And I know, Peter, you always tell me anything around 1% is literally allowing for time for like someone to move out and someone to move in. 1% is basically regarded as zero because you have people moving out and moving in. Once the rents start to get near 1%, you have auctioning of rents where people advertise a two-bedroom apartment, say, for $500 a week, and 100 people turn up, and then they start saying, I'll give you 520 and somebody says, I'll give you 530 And that's starting to happen now in Sydney already, and certainly in Perth. And it's, it's about 0.2% away from happening here now. Something else that I found fascinating is over 50% of that market is, is fully owned. So, you know, you've got 17% mortgage holders and 21% renters. That's, an, that's a seriously good sign of a solid area in terms of what is happening. And it's no surprise that someone like Aria, with the type of capital that they've got behind them, and, and as uh, Peter said, $60 million, I, what, I can't remember what you said, seven or eight years ago, and they actually went and land banked in this area right. and bought up a whole lot of sites. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and that's why they can you know, bring great opportunities to the market now. There you've got the rental yield, 7%, and virtually zero stock in the market. So you know, I, just, I just think that this is a, a, very, a very big endorsement, and certainly well done to Peter and to, to, to Kristen, because the clients that they've helped invest here have, have done extremely well and, and will continue to do well because they've bought a great investment and they've also bought it in a great area you know, in, terms of, in terms of what's happening. And, and that's not what we're saying. You know, that, that's what the market and the research is saying. So it says, yeah, fortunately for investors, units and apartments are not only more affordable than houses in South Brisbane, they are also highly more sought after, which is effectively what, what Peter was saying. You know, Peter, from your perspective, is there anything else that, that when, when it comes to South Brisbane that we haven't covered or that you think is, is very important to, to mention with regards to South Brisbane? Well, it's just the demand is continuing, as I mentioned 
the next development that ARIA will be doing won't even start construction till September and they're all sold. They have another another site after another two sites that I know of after that, Grey Street, and one of the things that I've been promised by uh, ARIA is that as soon as the last half a dozen apartments in Artisan are sold, uh, as soon as they're sold, I will have first choice for my clients of the apartments in Grey Street, which is within, again, another 500 metres of the three uh, developments we're talking about here. And following that, I've got another massive development uh, in um, Edmonston Street. Now, the, the, one of the keys to their success is they've been sticking over the last few years to these apartment blocks of between 50 and 70 apartments, which works extremely well for them. But the demand is such that they're selling them out so quickly. So, um, yeah, I mean, one of the one of the things that's called another factor that we haven't mentioned is driving this demand. There's also a difficulty of getting developments through council in a in a judicious and a quick manner. There's a great deal of bureaucracy getting property developments up because of the demands of the council and the town planners. So the demand is outstripping the ability of the market and the system to supply stock. And Artisan, because as you just said, Scott, their acquisition of properties, uh, sites uh, over the last seven to eight years, they've got most of that bureau bureaucracy out of the way because they've, they're getting their sites up and approved and their designs approved ahead of time because they've already got the sites. Well, many of the developers have to go out, find the sites. By the time they've found the site, go through the process, which can take two to three years, you know, the market's moved on. But they're right there and they've been prepared for it. And I think they are certainly the best developers in Brisbane by a long way. Well, I mean, I mean, Peter, you, you mentioned you mentioned Artisan, and, and to be honest, if people like the, the pictures of Station 16, I mean, that's completely sold out. There's nothing, there's nothing anyone can do about that now. But that same developer, Aria, actually owns the site right next door. Now, I've personally been there. I've personally, you know, I, I saw, I watched Station 16 get built, and Peter's personally taken me to the site where Artisan is, and it's literally right next door. It's the, it's the site right next door. Um, so the pictures that one's seen, with regards to station 16, and, and maybe I should uh, I should just pull them up again quickly in terms of in terms of what we were looking at. But all these pictures that we looked at, the the idea is to design a very similar building, similar spec, and and to build it. And effectively, the site is actually this piece of land just here on the left hand side here. So you've got station 16 here, and there's this building, and then there's another lovely building on the left hand side over here. And again, if you're interested, I can send you pictures. I've got pictures and videos, you know, when I was there. But effectively, Artisan is effectively on this piece of land right here. And so if, if you like the look of this, you know, and, and the look and feel in terms of what you're getting and, and, and everything else, and you, and you like what's happening in South Brisbane, we are lucky because the building was sold out, but there's a couple of units that have come back on the market that were reserved and, and people have not been able to get their mortgage approvals in place or, you know, whatever. So they, they might have been the best units that were effectively reserved right up front, but they've come back on the market. And what Peter's exclusively done for us is he's actually brought those opportunities to us for our clients. And, and the reason being is that, you know, we, our clients were so happy in 2011 with Station 16. We've been pleading for, for a similar type of opportunity in 2012. And uh, I just thought I would run through some of the pictures again, but this is exactly the type of uh, quality and finishes and, and one could get the furniture pack and again the views in terms of in terms of where you are. So that, that really was was artisan and sorry that's not the picture I wanted to pull up. And you can actually see if I bring up uh, that artisan document, where's it gone now? Uh, yep, there it is. Um, you can see the number, I mean pretty much as Peter said, that almost the whole building's been sold out. But a couple of units have come back on and, and he's ex exclusively held them for us so that we could, and it's one of the reasons we wanted to share with people tonight and share the opportunity. You can see the white ones here and these are the ones with the city aspect. So they're, they're facing back over the river and, and uh, you know, like those views with that balcony, etc. you know, of, of what's available. So a really, really great opportunity and if you are, you know, interested, we, we, can, uh, we can give you more details on that and certainly if you've got any Should questions. Sorry, uh, should we run a poll just to see who would be interested in the South Brisbane um, investment as a suburb after everything we've just been through? 
We can, Kristen. If, if you wouldn't mind, I haven't set one up. Could you set one up while, uh, while we continue? Okay. Never done um, ones. If I take long, excuse me. <laughs> it's fine. Um, so, yeah. So what, we, what we'll do basically is the other, the other thing that, uh, that I wanted to mention to people was, you know, some people don't like off-plan. I, I must admit with ARIA, and hopefully you can see the quality of development that our clients have, have invested in, in Station 16. And with ARIA, it's really not something that I'm concerned about because when they're building for cash, and, and when they've got the type of reputation that they've got, they're not going to come into the market and, and build something of a substandard. But some people, some people don't want to wait a year. Some people, they're interested in, in finding something that's available you know, now in terms of where, where we are and, and the opportunity. And the other opportunity that I just wanted to mention and ask Peter about, it's another opportunity that he's involved with called Kelvin Grove. And Kelvin Grove, funny enough, we actually um, did a huge due diligence on Calvin Grove Shopping Center, um, so I really know a hell of a lot about this area. And you know, I'll let Peter go into it in a little bit more detail. But you've effectively got the Queensland University of Technology. It's about two kilometres from the CBD. It's it's a it's a whole little um, suburb, you know, kind of within the city, if you want to call it that. Um, and there's a huge amount of of cafes and shops and universities and and everything else. And I actually saw Calvin Grove. Interesting enough, when it was being built uh, last year, Peter took me to, to see that. And, and Calvin Grove is now completed. And once again, um, there's actually only one unit available in Calvin Grove. Um, it's unit 107. And interesting enough, what's happened here is we've got a valuation. The property was valued at 559. And, um, and, and sorry, it was, it was listed at 559, but it's been valued at 555. And interestingly enough, what's happened is the developer has finished the entire development, he's sold all the units, and he's got this one unit that fell over right at the last thing because the person couldn't get a mortgage. And so what they're offering us as a discount you know, to, to, to someone who wants to, to act quickly is where they actually buy the property at 549, but it includes a furniture pack. Um, and the furniture pack is worth $22,000, so effectively you're buying it at 527. And interestingly enough, there's already apartments being rented in there for six hundred and ten dollars a week, so you're looking at a, a really solid, strong return on a property that's already ready. So you've got artisan if you want to buy and put down a ten percent and 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 benefit in a year's time, or you've got Eden View that's available. Peter, tell us a little bit about Eden View. I know that you had thirty-five units that were put on the market, and forty-eight hours later, you know what happened basically. Oh, absolutely, Scott. I must say, there's more there's more apartments left than one. That one in particular, he did fall over. He's, but the demand for rentals is such that of about another 15 that he's got left, he's rented them out himself, the developer himself, because uh, the building was finished about eight weeks ago on a Friday that was registered with the council for habitation and there were 34, 34 investors that bought properties in the building and uh, they were all rented by Tuesday night. The one bedders went from 430 to 460 a week unfurnished the two bedders went from 535 to 570 a week unfurnished. Kelvin Grove again is within two kilometres of the centre of the CBD. It was a very old area. They've created what they refer to as an urban village and everything has been upgraded. It's, there's a lot of high-tech industries in there, the, the Institute of Technology, uh, a lot of very high-tech stuff. There's the biggest hospital in Queensland, the Royal Brisbane Hospital. It's got a superb rental pool uh, of potential renters in there. The company that's made the building is the Vintage Property Group. While they're not as big uh, or as uh, in the same class as ARIA, they make the builder himself, John Gangini, would be one of the top six builders in Brisbane and it's beautiful. And it sits right on the top of a hill. It's uh, 100 metres from Woolworths. I mean, everything is just right around it. And there's a number of properties there still for sale. That one that you mentioned in particular is a particularly good buy but there are a couple of three bedders left, but they're all basically all rented out because the developer just uh, was just getting so much rent, he decided he'd rent them and take the pump that he could sell them fully tenanted rather than take the pump with owner occupiers. So while they're sitting there waiting to be sold, they're getting exceptional rents. But I think, I mean, you know, I think you said to me last time we spoke, it was something like they had 35 units available and 48 hours later they were all rented out, you know. And I know in South Africa, if, 
if I've got 35 units and they come on the market all at one time, it will take a good couple of weeks, if not a couple of months, to rent. And it just kind of days. shows you that, that, that demand, basically. And the reason for that is where it is with that rental pool, as you can see on your, your diagram, QUT and the campuses there, there are a lot of mature age students, not kids. I mean, there, there are a lot of people from India and the Middle East that are government-sponsored students studying architecture, chemistry, uh, medicine, engineering at those universities that are funded by their government and the government pay the rent and they don't even ask the price. Is one available? Yes. What's the, what's the rent? Who cares? So that's why they're getting such very good rent. And I mean, that's just, you know, when, when you're looking at it in terms of the, the rental and, and what you're getting, it, it really is quite astounding. I'm actually just working it out here quickly. Um, I just wanted to quickly see what the what the yield was in terms of where you're looking at. But uh, you've effectively got a, a price here at, uh, what, did I, what did I say, you're looking at uh, 527. So you're buying it at 527. And effectively, let's just check the yield here. You've got that, uh, that there divided by that. So you're looking at a yield. Oh, what am I doing wrong with my calculation? Sorry. You've got a net yield of over five percent for those furnished apartments, which is very, very good. Uh, yeah. No, I mean it's a it's an extremely solid yield in terms of what you're looking at. So, I mean, look, that's uh, that's you know that just and I just wanted to give you know people an idea of the type of thing. And I think also, like I started off with regards to the webinar, there's two things when it comes to to international property. And, and, you know, over 80% of people that invest overseas lose money. That's statistical. It's terrible. But South Africans, over 80% of people that invest overseas lose money. And the reason for that is that they don't get the right information and they don't have the right partners. So if you are looking over to invest overseas, you know, get hold of us. We can effectively, we've got a report on the six things you need to know before you invest overseas. But the purpose of tonight is, is to really delve in and to understand someone like Peter who's on the ground. He's, he's an expert. He understands that, that market. He understands that Brisbane CBD. He, he cherry-picked, you know, the best development in the best suburb in the whole of Australia in 2011. And you know, certainly from my perspective, you know, I, I mean, we've been in the property game a long time, Peter, so I know that obviously there's, there, you could argue there's an element of luck there. But to be fair, with, with your type of experience and your type of knowledge, you know, you helped our investors, over 80% of them last year, invest in, in the number one suburb in the whole of Australia. And, and, and a massive amount of credit has to go to Kristen there as well, you know, because of the two of you working together and, and really facilitating that and, and whatever. And, and what, we, what we're now bringing and showing people is that there's, there's more opportunities in South Brisbane, that, that, number one, that number one area with the same developer um, in a building called Artisan. There's only seven units left. And as I said to you, they're units that were, you know, taken up, but they've, they've come back on the market. It presents us with a great opportunity, um, and, and Peter's offered them exclusively to us and our clients um, so that they can, they can benefit from it. Obviously, not for that long, Peter, I'm sure. I'm sure there are people chomping at the No, no, they won't be lasting very long as the market picks up. In fact, I was talking to Kirsty last week uh, from ARIA, and uh, they're waiting for this webinar and the results from that, and um, I guess... We are hoping that they will all go. If not, they will be, you know, cleaning them out. So uh, the demand is is, is increasing uh, rapidly. And, uh, and Peter, they include. One of the things that I want to stress, and you've just touched on it, Scott, is that. Sorry, Peter. Just, sorry, Peter. Just quickly, Kristen, you were just going to ask a question there, just to make sure Peter covers. Oh, the just confirming that the available units at Artisan include the furniture packs, valued at twenty-two thousand dollars as well. Oh, really? right. They do indeed. Well, yes, they do. That's good. And I, and I think Kristen, she's also um, given a rental guarantee for the first two years on those. As well? Oh, that's wonderful. No, I was just confirming that um, for our IPS clients, yeah. Because they don't have any trouble. Really yeah. As you've seen already. I mean, they've got tenants waiting. They do. <laughs> All our clients have been paid, even all the rental income, even if it's a prorated amount from the date of settlement through to the end of that month, everyone, everyone has tenants. It's, our clients are over the moon. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, you're dealing with very answer. reputable people, which is, gives me great comfort uh, because yeah. that's the only way I work. And I, I think the thing that's very, very important, when the ups, ups and downs of the property market happen over years, when you're this close to the city, 
no matter what the economic conditions of the country is, these sorts of properties do not go down. They will level out. The further you are away from the CBD, the furthest properties will go down first and be last to come back. But these properties close to the CBD are going to maintain their value and as the property market increases, they will increase accordingly. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and just to point out, in case in case people aren't aware, you can hopefully see my little mouse cruising around over here. But there you've got the Brisbane CBD. The river goes down and it turns the corner and comes back round. Over here you've got South uh, South Brisbane, which is exactly where we're talking about, South Bank uh, and Cultural Precinct. This is exactly where we're talking about in terms of Otterson. And over here you've got Calvin Grove. You know, so you can see the proximity to the CBD in terms of what's happening. And I know, I know. Peter's been, you know, very bullish on 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 CBDs and and the transfer and the the change in in it, it's a big you know trend in terms of the change and, and how young and old are, are wanting to live closer to the CBD and I know Peter you joke you know people don't want to be caught drink driving they don't want to be stuck in traffic and everything well, else. Well, that's exactly right. The, you traffic, know, the these, traffic in most capitals is horrific. So um, you know people are just not going to sit in their car for an hour an hour and a half a day going out to the burbs and. Uh, they want to be close to amenities and facilities. They want to live where they play and work. So, so really, just again, you know, the, the balances. You've got Artisan that is off plan, and you've got uh, and you've got Calvin Grove that that is that is existing. It's ready now. It's uh, you know, it's ready to literally rock and roll. So, depending on what people want. Now, if anyone's got any questions, please fire them through because obviously we've got Peter available. We've got Kristen. Both of them have tremendous experience, and and the beauty is. With station 16 literally being, you know, you can throw a, a stone. It's literally like right next door. You know, we, it's kind of like a cut, copy, paste. We've been through the process, you know, already, and, and we know what to expect in terms of the process and how it's going to work and what we can expect from the developer. So we've discussed Austin, we've discussed, uh, we've discussed Eden View, and then just lastly, um, something that um, that that I'm finding very appealing to myself is, you know, a lot of our investors are looking at a global property portfolio. And they're wanting the best of Australia, and I think you know tonight. Thanks very much to Peter, and 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 his hard work on the ground, and 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 Kristen helping and facilitating that. In 2011, we've helped clients invest in literally not only the best city, not only the best product, but in the best suburb. And and I really think that that's a, a huge testament, and it's why you know I'm excited about what's happening in Artisan as well as what's happening in Eden View. However, there is a balance to it. I have been over to to the states and. If you are interested, we've come up with a new concept called the three-in-one concept. And if you've got a million rand cash available now, I can actually show you how you can invest in both Australia and America. So you can own property in Australia and America, and you can actually own, you know, property in each country, which benefits because you know Australia is a very stable economy. Uh, Peter's been through the, the supply and demand, um, where effectively it's it's steady eddy. The economy is in a good position. The currency is in a good position, and and you get good solid rental returns. Um, and then you've got you've got America where there's there's higher risk slightly, um, but but there's also higher returns. There's higher rental returns. And by actually doing a balancing act, you can buy one where you're benefiting from the Australian market. You can buy one where you're benefiting from the American market, and the two can actually balance each other out so that you have a completely cash flow positive investment in terms of where you are. So if you are interested. You know, and let me know because I can I can show you we've been helping a number of our high net worth sophisticated clients do that. But it really is about about choosing those those blue chip investments like what what Peter and Kristen have been showing us in terms of in terms of where we are. So I've got a I've got a graph up on the screen, and I was just wondering if there were any questions in terms of you know anyone any thoughts any concerns. I see Peter, we are coming up to the to the eight o'clock. You know, Mark, and and I don't want to run over too much. Um, are there any, no any thoughts or comments from your side, Peter, in terms of or Kristen, even you know, in terms of uh, anything else that we haven't covered or anything that's important that you feel that our our listeners and our viewers need to know? No, I, I think you've covered everything admirably. In fact, it's been an excellent presentation, and you've done it very thoroughly. I think the thing to uh, to keep in mind is there is continuing demand. There will be continuing demand. And today's newspaper, they're bringing 2,000 electric electricians in from the United States to fill the demand. They're going to have to be housed. They're coming into Brisbane to because they can't get enough tradespeople here to supply the demand of the miners. 
Um, it's just such a demand for labour that they're importing labour into Australia and those people have to be housed and this is what's causing the demand and what's causing the, the shortages is the, the bureaucracy that you have to go through to build property. So I can't see the demand ceasing any time soon because of these structural situations. So it's just a good situation for investors at this, at this time. Yeah. And tell me, there's a question come through here from Paul, um, mm. a, a question, Paul, and, and I've got, I mean, I've actually got our top 10 concerns and it's actually one of them, but I think it's, you know, very pertinent. I'm sure it's on some people's minds is, you know, I live in South Africa, you know, how am I going to, you know, how am I, Paul's basically saying, how's he, how's he going to manage it? How's he going to manage and maintain it when it's a long way away? I mean, what, what is your experience, Kristen or, or Peter, with regards to that in terms of Paul's concern? Well, if you have a look at, just, just take um, the um, Station 16 area. The, the two people that run the, run, the, uh, run the building, they're basically there seven days a week. Now, they will look after everything. And you've got another situation uh, over in Siana and in Rapili where one of your investors has bought a property in there. All of those, those, the body corporate fees, the council rates, they will all be sent direct to, to the owner. But the day-to-day -day management of the building, I mean, I own an apartment in Indrapilly. I get my rent statement once a month. The rent just gets paid in, directly into my bank account. Um, there's, there's very strict rules and regulations here on what they call the, uh, the body corporates commission. It's highly regulated. These people have got to do the right thing. They are regulated in the same way as lawyers and accountants. If they mess up, they have a major problem uh, with the Office of Fair Trading. So I think Kristen had, uh, had a test to this. All of your clients that are bought in ARIA are all getting their rent on time. They will get notified of uh, on a quarterly basis for their council rates. The tenants pay the electricity and that's all managed by the, by the, uh, the on-site managers. And Aria in particular, and and in Edenview, you've got really highly qualified professional managers in there. I was going to say, not only that, if there is a funny query or a different query, like I had um, on Monday, one of our clients in Station 16 asked something normal, really. I just email the managing agents on behalf of our clients too, and I get all the info and I can put it into um, our normal IPS updates. Um, and our clients are absolutely superbly happy. Um, every single one of them have been paid. We've been settling on these apartments since the 12th of June. Um, they've all been paid something, even if it's prorated um, from date of settlement or anything. So from a management perspective, I mean, not only do we have the best, as you say, Peter, the managing agent physically living in the, each building as well, doing the day-to-day -day maintenance of all that. I mean, the people I've been dealing with as well, on behalf of all IPS clients, um, you know, uh, from Morgan Suites, for example, who's now managing um, Station 16. They, they're superb to deal with. I send in one long email, I cover all my clients' questions, it gets back to me immediately. Um, so from our clients' perspective, they have need to pay. They don't need to worry about are the hours being eight hours ahead or anything like that. They just know, look, Kristen's my contact person for all of this. Anything relating to it, you know, just pop me an email, give me a phone call, whatever, and I'll find out. So by the time I wake up tomorrow morning, we have our answers already. And Kristen, you? something that your clients might not be aware of about Australia and the way those buildings are managed, those, those managers buy the rights to manage that building. So it's their business. And yeah. the better the building is run, the more money they make. By, by keeping their owners happy, they operate for the owners. And the, the more that that building is run correctly, the more their investment increases. So it's in the, the yeah. interest of those people managing the building to ensure that their owners are happy, that they get paid, that the building is kept in good order so that your uh, investment is protected. They actually buy the management rights to the building. So if they let the building you know, fall below the par, then their investment is degraded. So they have an incentive to make sure that their owners are, are properly looked after, that everything is done correctly, and the building is maintained in absolutely top order. I don't think it works that way in too many other areas. No, it certainly doesn't work like that in South Africa. Paul, <laughs> oh, so, that should answer the question. 
Yeah, I think I think Paul, you've kind of got the you've kind of got the feeling there, and I mean certainly for us, it's it's based on our client experiences and how happy they are that that gives us such confidence in terms of delivery. There's another question here, which Kristen I think might be valuable for you, but it's from Jacques, and Jacques is basically he just said to you know, can I get a mortgage? Um, if so, how much? And and you know what what percentage? And um, and what is the process basically? And you know obviously Jacques Jacques is looking at one of these um, units. Um, Jack, you can definitely get a mortgage. Um, the percentage, uh, the bank's value, they look at each individual in, a, you know, in, in its own situation. Um, this year so far, I've had two 80% offers. I've had an 82% uh, loan-to-value offer. I've had an 84%. Um, but mostly, mostly, we are conservative. So when we sit down with you, uh, we will do a cash flow projection uh, scenario with you. We always work on 70% to be safe. Um, I've got a client, it, it all depends on your unique uh, wishes, what your, what your strategy is, but um, for example, I've got clients who want, want to put down a 40% deposit to break even, but then I've got other clients, uh, bigger investors who buy seven properties per annum with us or, or whatever, um, and they prefer getting the highest loan to value possible, you know, in order to release equity at a later stage, etc, etc. So the market's definitely turning in ours, uh, for the better. Um, because the banks are not, I'm noticing, and again, only in the last, say, five, six months, but um, they've been less strict in terms of loan to value percentages just because one is a non-resident or not. Um, the fact that I've had four, you know, 80% loan offers, 82 and 84, um, it's, it's abnormal. We didn't get that from 2010, but it is good. <laughs> so they, are, they do look at every single person individually, and I help you do it right from here. Everything is online. Um, you can deal with me. I introduce you to our mortgage broker, fellow South African uh, qualified. He speak, speaks Afrikaans, which I think is always classic. The, our clients love oh, it. He's brilliant. he's brilliant, yeah. So between the two of us, everything can be done online via email. So all the documents, like you would apply for a mortgage in SA, you just scan an email through to Monet. Uh, myself, if you want to, you can deal direct with him. That's okay. And um, yeah, when it comes to original loan docs, once it's approved, and that is an office that you have to need to again, to sign them in original with a notary public, et cetera, et cetera. But it's, um, it's pretty much exactly as to what you'll need for any SA home loan. Um, you just, they ask for two years worth of everything. So a lot of admin in that way, but easy to do, very easy to do from South Africa. No, fantastic. Well, hopefully that answers it for Jacques. Kennedy's asked a question here. He says, can you tell us more about the platinum package? Uh, certainly, Kennedy. I mean, look, from our side, it's a, it's a very unique, bespoke concept designed by IPS. And effectively, what it does is it allows our high net worth, sophisticated clients to take advantage of their, their RAND returns. So effectively, it's about uh, you know, buy, you know, buying and paying for something up front in terms of RANDs and then benefiting in the long haul, getting a 30% return on, on money and then ultimately getting dollars paid on transfer of the property. So it, it really is a massive win-win on all parties' fronts. And with regards to our clients, the reason they love it is because effectively they don't need to use their overseas allowance. They're already getting, they know what the currency is up front, and then they, they're getting a, a large chunk of change paid to them um, on transfer or settlement so that they can cover any shortfalls for you know, generally more than two years. So you know, a lot of our clients love it because it gives them peace of mind for more than three years. They effectively, you know, the year for the building and, and more than two years. And, and it just gives them that, that peace of mind in terms of where they are and how the platinum package works. Um, and as I say, it's, it's fairly exclusive to, to IPS. So if, if someone is interested, we can go through that. But I mean, I really, the most important thing from an IPS perspective is that we offer that private banking service, you know, between uh, Kristen and myself and the rest of the team. We, you know, you can, you can go down the road and you can deal with, with the teller at Standard Bank and um, they'll be able to help you, or you can deal with Investec and, and have private banking service, and, and that's what we offer, you know, and, and it's by having partners, premium partners like Peter on the ground that, that we're able to do that. There's a, there's a question from Sarah, and Sarah, I thought I would actually walk, move on to the concerns. I know we're running out of time, and so I'm just going to flick through these very quickly, but Sarah actually said to me, you know, I want to go to Australia, um, and, and so I thought I'd pull up the first concern, because I think it's quite classic uh, that Sarah asked the question, but Sarah, we have it all the time. You know, Peter's on the ground. He's helped many of our clients. We've had many, many happy clients go over, meet with Peter. He's shown them around. Invariably, they, they go there intending to, to make one investment and walk away buying two or three because they just realize 
you know, what is happening in the market and how in depth Peter understands the market and the opportunities in the market. Uh, I know Peter, um, whenever someone comes over, they, they always walk away incredibly impressed. So you can go over to Oz and, and we've got people on the ground who can help you out. But I would, I would caution you for opportunities like Artisan and Eden View, you know, they won't be available unless you can kind of jump on an airplane, you know, in the next week or so in terms of what is happening. But I think, I think also that if any of your clients wanted to come to Australia, most of the developers would offer them return airfares uh, and refund those airfares upon signing of an unconditional contract. So if somebody has made up their mind to buy one of these properties, uh, I think I could talk to certain developers and get them to refund uh, a return economy class fare uh, if they were to sign an unconditional contract. Well, there we go, Sarah. <laughs> There's your trip to Australia paid for, basically. Just a couple of other concerns. I'm going to flick them very quickly because uh, I don't want to run over too late. But uh, these are concerns that a lot of our clients have. So very similar to what Paul said. I'm worried about management and maintenance. How do I do it? I think between you know Peter and uh, and Kristen, they really you know gave confidence in terms of what's happening. What happens if my tenants don't pay my rent? I can afford my mortgage. Well, interesting enough, Peter's already alluded to it. At Artisan, there's actually a rental guarantee for two years. And on top of the rental guarantee, a lot of or all the clients at Station 16 went for the platinum package, and so they had at least eleven and a half thousand dollar buffer, if not a twenty-three thousand dollar buffer. Scott, all yep. of your investors should take out um, landlord's insurance, which costs about three hundred dollars a year, which also um, accounts for that situation. Uh, it's a very cheap sort of insurance, which covers damage to the apartment and also non-payment of rent. So that, that's uh, something that all landlords should uh, take out. Perfect. And I mean, we had this question, um, I think it was Jacques that asked the question in terms of mortgages, so we've answered that. I'm thinking of moving to, oh, should I buy before I move or when I get there? Surely it's easier when I get there. Just to, just my interest, and again, I've got a whole other webinar on this and a whole document, but there's four major reasons that are beneficial to buying property before one moves to us. The first one is tax. The, the, the Australian government is very, very pro-property ownership. They're very good. So in South Africa, if I've got a property and my mortgage is 10,000 Rand a month and my rent is 6,000, that's short for 4,000 Rand. It's Section 21 of the Tax Act. It's ring fenced and I can't offset it against my income. Where in Australia, you can take the shortfall, you can depreciate on the construction, the fixtures and fittings, you can take the acquisition costs and you can even take your inspection trip. And you can accumulate a lovely tax loss. And so if you move to Australia, you don't pay a cent in income tax until you've paid off your tax loss. And if you don't move to Australia, you can effectively write it off against capital gains tax. So I always joke, it's like going to the casino, you can bet on red or black, you win both ways. Immigration, buying property doesn't necessarily guarantee you immigration. Um, only countries like, like, like Cyprus and, uh, and some of the, you know, the scams or schemes in, in America, um, you know, where, where there's nowhere in the world that I'm aware of where you get immigration for free. But what does happen in Australia, so, so in areas like Cyprus, you're buying a, a terrible investment, but you're getting you know, necessarily some sort of citizenship agreement. But in Australia, by buying the right investment, particularly if you're going in on a business visa, it can facilitate your investment because there's a certain couple of hundred thousand dollars you have to invest on a business visa, and any money that you invest in property can facilitate that. Credit rating, a lot of people underestimate the, the, the importance of a credit rating, but you know, you know, my uncle went from Harare to Brisbane and bought a $1.2 million home. And for a year, he couldn't get a credit card or car finance or anything because he didn't have a credit rating. So we always say start living before you leave if you are thinking. And then, you know, a lot of people think, well, I don't necessarily want to live in an apartment on the river in Brisbane. That's not the point. The point is you want to buy the best investment where you're getting the best return on your rands and cents, the best return on your dollars and cents. And I think tonight we've safely shown that with Peter's guidance and, and Kristen's assistant, we've helped clients literally invest in the best suburb and the best property with one of the best developers in Australia. And, and what you do when you do that in terms of your investments is that if you do move to Australia one day, you can leverage off those investments and you can buy your dream home wherever it is that you want to in terms of what you're looking at. Some people say if it's so good in Australia, why is status and others in South Africa? Well, they're not. You know, with all due respect, Kristen and myself and the team fly to Australia all the time. We went to Australia and found Peter, not the other way around. And, and really, you know, it's about helping our clients find the best partners on the ground in terms of what's happening. And not the rubbish like this of all the South Africans that have been buying on the Gold Coast. And I'm sure, Peter, you've got some choice things to say about the Gold Coast and what's happening there in terms of 
the massive oversupply and, and lack of rentals and everything else. And yet, unfortunately, all these South Africans have been hoodwinked into buying in the Gold Coast. Don't go near it. Um, and then, you know, my brother lives in Perth, shouldn't I look there? Well, again, we, we're not really interested, you know, I, I as an investor, I'm just in, interested in the rands and cents. We've got a full solution right from beginning to end, finance, you know, management, maintenance, etc. So it's far better to get a professional to look after your property than, than one of your brothers, your siblings or something else. Why should you do it now? Well, I think we've been through that in a lot of detail. You know, the opportunity, the market's starting to pick up. It has been an allow for... For, for probably six to 12 months uh, because of the interest rate cycle. And, you know, developers are fairly motivated. There's some good opportunities in the market. But as Peter has alluded to on many occasions, that that is changing and, and who knows. And then the other thing is, you know, you've got a fixed investment here. You know what the returns are. And, and you could say, well, I want to wait for two years and see what happens in the market. But as a matter of interest, the RAND lost over 12% in, uh, in the month of May. So, you know, the property market in Australia definitely didn't lose 12%. And unfortunately, for, for our new investors, well, it just got 12% more expensive. For our Station 16 investors, they just made, and all our other investors, they just made a 12% uh, return on their investment by doing absolutely nothing. Um, and there are lots of the companies... Dollar's rising again. Yep. The euro and the, uh, and the dollar. The US dollar, our currency is up against the US dollar, and it's up against the euro. No, 100%. Yeah. Well, it's, it's because of it's such a well-run economy and because it's resources-based. Um, it, it's, it was the only country in the G20 not to go into, into, into recession during the GFC. And I think, it, you know, that I always believe that your currency is like a share price. It's testament to the quality of the, of the management of the company in terms of what is actually happening. And then lastly, a question which we get all the time, and I just want to cover it. Surely it's cheaper if I deal directly with Arden or even if I buy in Australia from someone directly. That's not the case at all. Peter and I and Kristen, you know, we work as a team together. We add huge benefit to Peter by being on this side in South Africa, and Peter adds huge benefit to us by being on the ground in Australia. And so we share the income in terms of what is happening. And, and really, from your perspective, the market is completely transparent in Australia. And if you would buy, if, even if we were to price fix or raise the prices or whatever, well, Peter would go to jail, and, and you know, it, it's just not the way things are done. So... It's what you see is, is actually exclusive and quite often we get better deals uh, in South Africa because the developers don't want to put stuff out on the open market so we get better deals offered to our clients. I know certainly, Kristen, you've negotiated some fantastic deals for clients. Just say, yeah, specifically for our IPS clients, that the locals did none of them, not one in Station 16 got a rental guarantee for two years. Um, that was something offered only to IPS clients because it was our clients' uh, biggest concern. Um, that's just an example of the benefits, yeah. Yeah, no, 100%. And so pretty much in conclusion, you know, for those of you who don't know us, we've helped over 2,000 people invest in international property. We're not an estate agent that sells houses in Bryanston or Cape Town. We only sell international pr property. We only do international investment. It's our speciality. We, as I said, we've helped uh, people invest to a value of over $1.6 We've got offices in the major, major countries. We've got partners in the major countries. We spend millions on research every year. And, and that's both ourselves and our partners, the extensive trips over to meet our partners to find out what's happening on the ground. We pride ourselves on our best of breed partners like the Peters. And trust me, in any country and in any city, there's very few people to the caliber of, of Peter. And that's, we pride ourselves. And, and Peter, it's a great honor to, to do business with you. And, and I love it when I see, you know, the best suburb in, in the whole of Australia. It's testament to, to your um, ability, knowledge, and, and understanding of the market. Thank you. And then lastly, you know, just from our side, we've got a sophisticated IT platform. You've, you've heard Kristen talk a hell of a lot tonight. Her and her team are absolutely amazing. You know, a lot of people get confused when they buy property. I think buying property is the whole job done. I often argue with people it's only about 20% of the job done. You've still got to understand the process, deal with the lawyers, the solicitors, the mortgage brokers, the banks, the management agents, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, and that's really what we pride ourselves in, and, and I believe that Kristen – is, is, and her team are literally the best in the business. I, I've never met anyone globally who, who can match what, what she does and the, and the service that she offers to the clients. Access to the off-market opportunities, we've already explained that. Kristen mentioned it. Very, very often, like with our artisan at the moment, we've got opportunities that aren't even on the market. And then lastly, you know, we were the first company to be, the first South African company to be invited onto the ARPP board, which stands for the Association of International Property Professionals. 
It's like the Estate Agents Affairs Board. It's just slightly, slightly uh, better run. It's run out of London, and it effectively regulates all international property professionals. And we were the first South African company. I'm not sure if any other company has been invited to that board, but we were certainly the first and, and, and one of the strongest members there. And as a matter of interest, I don't even have a thing for it, but I'm not sure, Kristen, if you know, but, uh, or Peter, you even know this, but I, um, I recently got awarded with CRS, which stands for Certified Res Residential Specialist, which is the number one award worldwide in terms of residential investment. It's an American um, uh, you know, organization. So we've effectively, we've, we've effectively accredited by the best in America and the best in, 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 in England in terms of worldwide property investment. So I think, I think it stands testament to, to the team and, and to the partners that we've got in terms of where we are. Some of the next steps, if you're interested, I, I know we've run over our time, so I'm going to finish off. But just contact us, send us an email, I'll give you my contact details now, give us a call, we set up a meeting, we understand what it is you're looking for and we, we provide you with solutions, we help you choose the property, we help you arrange the finance, we help you exchange, you know, with exchange control approval, we help you manage the entire purchase process, lawyers, FERB, which stands for Foreign Investment Review Board and don't even worry about it, we can explain it if you get all of us, we help you with developers, we arrange full inspections, of the property, you saw all the pictures of our client that bought at, at uh, number 504. You know, that's the type of thing that you can expect. And then we've got a solution right through to management. So, you know, having done it over 2,000 times, Kristen and I have jumped through uh, a number of hoops in our life and, and we know what to, what to expect. And, you know, we can really hold your hand and, and help you with regards to that property investment. And so really, you know, my, my logic is we've got the global knowledge, we've got the local solutions, we've got the best of breed partners to provide you with a transparent solution to preserve and create real wealth, have a plan B, and, and basically have peace of mind for you and your family through international property. And it's been a real honor and a privilege, uh, Peter and Kristen, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for everyone who's been online, they really have been, um, I've been quite overwhelmed by how many people have been online. You've got all our contact details there, there's our website, you've got my email, you've got our telephone number. If you want to get hold of Kristen, it's, it's very simple. It's Kristen at IPSinvest.com. So K-R-I-E, uh, sorry, K-R-I-S-T-E-N at IPS Invest. You've got our number. If you want to get with the times, you can go on iTunes and, and download our app, which has all the latest information. You can go to our blog, which has all the different uh, reports that we've been talking about. You can follow us on Twitter, where when Peter sends us information, and trust me, I'm sure Peter, Kristen will back me up, we get loads of information in terms of what's happening in the market and Peter keep it coming it's fantastic so that we know what's happening um, and then if you want to go to YouTube go on YouTube uh, you got the link there and then Facebook you know um, where we just keep you updated it's not about spamming it's just about keeping you updated with all the latest information so Viv thank you very much for your message we will uh, certainly contact you tomorrow thank you very much for that and uh, to anyone else out there it's been absolutely awesome talking to you if there are no more questions then I'd really like to say thank you to everyone who's been online. As always, it's an honor and privilege. I love this experience learning from, from experts on the ground. And so, Peter, thank you for your time. And Kristen, thank you for your time. My pleasure. Pleasure. Speak well, Peter. Speak to you tomorrow. Good night, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.